Hello everybody, my name is Michael Nix Erickson and thank you for watching The Foodivist, a continuing video series discussing all things food, what's in our food, who controls our food, and the laws surrounding our food. So this may be something that you've already heard about, but it's something that I want to touch on today, and that is food prices. So to give you a little background, when I was thinking about what I want to discuss in my first video, I thought I would talk about food prices. Over the next few weeks, I pivoted because I thought, or I hoped, uh, we were past this, but that doesn't seem to be the case. A few days ago, I saw an article from CNN discussing the persistence of high prices. Basically, the consumer price index rose by 8.3% year over year with no signs of slowing down. Just so you know, the consumer price index measures what consumers spend on goods and services, from groceries to gas. When we focus on grocery costs, that is up 3.5% year over year, with restaurant menu prices jumping 8% over the same period of time. When we jump into specifics, and this comes from the USDA, beef is expected to go up 55 to 6.5% this year, fish will go up 9% to 10%, with eggs going up 26 to 27%, fruits will increase by 8% to 9%, and veggies are up four and a half to five and a half percent. What's going on? For the first time in my lifetime, the cost of food is a campaign issue. People have to make tough choices about what they buy. And for many people, this goes beyond picking ground beef instead of, you know, a pricier cut. It's a choice between getting any protein at all. Many families have, you know, switched to buying generic products, buying items like beans to offset their cutting back on their meat budget. Adults are skipping meals or reaching out to food banks. Food banks like Feeding Green have seen demand double over the past year. Many food banks are also reporting an uptick in services for those seeking support for the very first time, with low-income families using food banks now regularly to source their food. And while demand continues to increase, donations continue to decrease compared to 2020 and 2021, with the biggest decrease coming from the federal government. But why is this all happening? The food price increase, the inflation, why is it all happening? So I'm not an economist, but the most reasonable theory that I've heard is really rather simple. Okay, so maybe simple isn't like the best word to use, but it's the word I'm going to use. In the early days of the pandemic, it wasn't unheard of for factories, production or processing plants to shut down and lay off those workers. As soon as these facilities felt ready to get back to work, there weren't any workers and it's expensive, an expensive process to tempt those people back. So we are stuck with open facilities that are understaffed now take that domestic problem and magnify it globally and throw in an excessive money printer. Yeah, that was about world governments. With countries like China still pushing their zero COVID policy, the demand for basic products like plastics or simple machine parts continues to accelerate. Even the cost of energy is impacting the cost of food as the cost of transporting that food continues to jump. You know, one of my local farmers told me that during the peak of the whole gas price issue last June, it cost her about $100 to travel to and from the market each time she went to the market. And when you're an independent farmer, that adds up. Many of the farmers I've purchased from in the past have sent emails to their mailing list to inform them their clients will that, you know, they will be raising prices. Some of these farmers have had to send multiple emails because the cost of doing business just continues to rise with the high cost of fertilizer impacting the price of all, all, I guess I'd call them plant support aids, just across the board. I wish I could say that this problem will clear itself up, but I, I don't think that it will. What I see occurring in Europe, you know, with the idea to tax cow herds, for example, I only see that as exasperating the problem. There have been many farmers who have taken to TikTok or Facebook to voice their frustrations. Um, one farmer, Holly... Way Willamu, I'm mean, gonna I guess. Uh, I can't. I can't remember what her name was. Uh, in Ohio, took the internet earlier in the summer and said, and I'm gonna be quoting here: 
there's something we have to buy that two years ago cost us $24. Last year was about $46. This year it's cost us $96. You want to act like it's the farmer's fault. It's not the farmer's fault. We are barely making it grow so you can buy this stuff in August, September, and October. When we look at the index for farm input prices, you know, year over year, Prices for farm-related expenditures have jumped 15% roughly year-over-year, year, nearly double the general inflation rate, and this is placing additional pressures on the local farmer and the local consumer as the farmer raises prices to offset inflation, but when they do that, they risk shrinking their customer base, and the consumer faces additional pressures due to inflation in other aspects of their life. There are some horror stories, I should say theories, that I've heard from other influencers in this space about continuing supply shocks and maybe even some food shortages, but I won't dive deeper into that aspect of things because I don't have enough information to place a prediction of that sort and what, on you know what will happen over the next few months. What I will reiterate is that I do expect food prices to continue to apply pressures on the consumer. It shouldn't surprise you to hear that shrinkflation is a thing. To combat the criticism of rising prices for items in the grocery store, certain corporations keep prices set but limit the amount of product you can buy. In fact, there is a website called mouseprint.org, link below, that tracks shrinkflation or what they call skimpflation. Products like Scott toilet paper have 20% less paper when compared to the 2006 product. Many cereal brands have changed the size of the family size box to 18 ounces of product instead of 23 ounces like it was just a year ago, but they kept the price the same. Coffee brands like Pete's Coffee went from 12 ounces to 10 and a half ounces and pushed up the price, and even dog food brands are pulling back on the amount of product they provide in a single bag. But what can we do? It is fair to say that most of us are experiencing economic pressures from this inflation. I'm a person who, you know, believes it's important to eat a wide variety of things. So whenever possible, I always encourage people to stop just buying chicken breast. If you can, buy a whole chicken. I'm, I'll, I'll tell you why. You can roast that chicken, carve it up, and use some of the meat for one dish that is maybe offset with veg veggies or, or rice. You can throw the bones into a stock pot, make a broth, and you use that broth to make a chicken soup, for example, because I think... First of all, I love soup, but soup is a great way to stretch your food budget. Um, another thing is to simply walk around your grocery store. And just so you know, when I say walk around your grocery store, I'm really talking about the vegetables and the butcher station. If it's in a box, inflation, I think it's only going to get more expensive. So if possible, buy like a whole carrot. Don't get diced carrots or, or whatever they, I don't know. Don't make somebody else do the work to like chop up the garlic for you or, you know, dice up those carrots. Just get a whole carrot and dice it up yourself and look for what is on sale. I know we all have things that we love and things that we hate to eat, but in this day and age, we can buy whatever like veggie or, or meat is on sale and then look up a recipe. And, you know, that could be a challenge to you and a challenge to me that maybe we need to both expand our, our spectrum of food choices, things that we will willingly and happily eat. And one other thing that I want to share, a city of any size will have a discount fruit or veggie vendor. I know in my city, which has about 300,000 people, there are two of these vendors. These places receive produce from area stores that were rejected because maybe the product itself wasn't pretty enough or it's getting ready to turn or spoil. My local vendor has like avocado for sale for a dollar a piece. Bananas were 67 cents a pound, for example. This product was, you know, very ripe. Uh, so you, you, you should eat it soon, but why couldn't you and your family visit this type of vendor, you know, twice a week? So my point is that inflation rises, the cost of all items will rise, but buying whole foods, meaning like a whole chicken or an entire bunch of carrots, will be cheaper and offer you more options to stretch your meals. Don't buy, you know, canned, like chopped carrots or, you know, uh, pre-cooked chicken breast. By stretching yourself to include more in your diet and your cooking skills, you also stretch your food budget. I'm Michael Nix Erickson, and I will see you next week.